Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, a couple of things on this. Uh, welcome. And I understand that, um, you know, just from a, a brief communications kind of perspective, uh, not everyone knew about the various speeches that we gave yesterday. <laughs> and so just want to acknowledge that um, I gave this speech three times yesterday, but I know that, um, you know, we're still getting up to speed on certain things, even like Twitter and things like that. So just letting folks know that we normally would not do what we're doing right now, but we wanted to because we just want to acknowledge that uh, not everyone kind of knew about what we were doing yesterday. So yesterday was kind of a mini like state of the city transition-ish kind of theme. And so uh, that's why we did want to provide an opportunity for folks who couldn't attend the ones uh, yesterday. Uh, okay, so uh, with that, um, there are some things we've got to work on in the city, and it is normal in any transition. There are always challenges that are solved by the previous administration, and there are always challenges that are left for the next person. And so we've got a few, not surprising at all, uh, but they're very real, and they're things that we want folks to be aware of, and they're things that we are very much working on and prioritizing. Now, uh, first and foremost, we have a budget deficit, and so in short, projections were made for 3% GRT growth, and roughly we've had 1.7%, and the result obviously creates a budget deficit. We also have some outstanding capital requirements with respect to a 911 um, transmitter system that is going to cost, it depends, but let's say an estimated $10 million right now that we have to do for public safety reasons. And uh, we also have <clears throat> some situations with respect to some of these projects that have been done that I'll touch on as well. But the high level picture is uh, that. And Monday, we are going to be releasing the first set of budget documents that are normal in the budget process. And so we can have a more detailed discussion on those forecasts and on the deficit uh, come Monday. Now, with respect to a couple of projects, uh, in general, the uh, name of the game was to balance the budget historically on something called vacancy savings. There's nothing in, at all financially inappropriate about this. It's a strategy, and it basically works like this. There's vacancies in departments. We might need a little e extra money so we don't fill those vacancies, and then we move that money to a special projects fund and use it for baseball fields and projects like that. Every mayor, governor does this. It's all normal. We've been doing it, though, for a lot, for a long time in Albuquerque and it's caught up to us. And what that means is that we can no longer afford to fund city government through vacancy savings or capital projects through vacancy savings. So we've, we've squeezed all of the juice out of that orange financially and so now we actually have to face up to the fact that uh, we need to fill those vacancies and we need the funding to do it. And of course the, pri the biggest vacancy is of course in our police department. Okay, now um, couple of projects to touch on. Uh, ART, there are some challenges with this with respect to the status of the funding. I know all of you have covered this in many ways, and so we want to be clear from the city's perspective where we are at. And I'm going to introduce Lawrence in a minute, and he'll go into some of those details. But the ART funding is uh, planned and prepared and appropriated. It is not locked in. And so we are concerned about that, but we're also moving fast to try and deal with that as best that we can. And in total, there's basically, um, actually, I'm going to let Lawrence go over the specific numbers on that. But uh, we also have, uh, you know, I know some people keyed in on uh, the fountain out front. Um, it turns out that was a frozen pipe near the fountain that is leaking, so depending on how you want to talk about it. Uh, and so uh, Lawrence will also touch on that. And of course, we have our officer shortage, and that those numbers are the same that we've been sharing with you. I know the chief shared about 847, I think he mentioned. And of course, um, you know, let's start with just getting to 1,000. We need to map out how to do that, so we're working on that. The last dynamic is overtime. So again, an issue that has been covered a little bit but we have to pay time and a half for overtime. It's more expensive, and that sucks up the extra money that we're supposed to be using to hire more cops so that we don't need overtime. 
So to solve that problem, you also need a little bit of money in between so that you can hire more cops so then you don't have to do overtime. And so this is just the realities of how financing works and how we have to unwind this situation that we're in. So lastly, uh, let me say this. One on ART, we are going to, uh, at some point, it might not be until January, do a extensive lengthy briefing on details on ART. Uh, we're not prepared at this point to do that, but we will be. And so we will let you know and do that publicly uh, for your information. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is we have uh, a gentleman in our administration who has submitted dozens of budgets and run our city for dozens of years. We also have a very qualified team of auditors who are very familiar with budgeting. So we are confident that we're gonna come up with several ideas and several ways to deal with these issues. But 12 days in, the first step is transparency and we wanted to let folks know where we are. And so uh, with that, I'm gonna let our COO uh, take whatever detailed questions and such you might have uh, for a few minutes. And uh, Lawrence Rael. Well, uh, thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you as well uh, for coming. Uh, let me uh, touch base a little bit on ART, uh, just simply because I know that that was a, uh, a topic of interest for many of you. As we have now, in 12 days, as the Mayor said, we begin to, to look at the financing and the structure of that project. That's a very visible project. It's one that we know is going to make a significant impact to the city, but we also need to look at how it was structured, et cetera. One of the concerns that we have with ART as it is today is the city of Albuquerque does not have a signed ag agreement with the Federal Transit Administration. That's an important uh, this, uh, piece of information because that is what triggers inevitably the payback to the city for the federal government dollars uh, to obviously to pay for the, for the project. That is an important piece that we are working on. We have had now several conversations with the regional administrator for the Federal Transit Administration. We're set to travel to, to Dallas in January to review the specifics. Our goal is to get that agreement signed as soon as possible. Uh, and that's an important piece that has not been completed and it is an important piece to getting the dollars from the federal government to uh, complete the project. Number two is we have, as we have now begun to peel the onion, if you will, on the project, there are some issues with accessibility to the platforms for the, for the handicapped community. We're getting a lot of concerns about, because they are in the median of the, of the roadway facility, and because you now have to cross traffic, we need to look at that and ensure that we have a uh, reasonable access and, or a safe access, and, and we'll, we will make that happen. The last piece of it is also the, an educational piece. And education, educating our drivers in the community about driving on Central when you have a bus uh, system that's in the median. That's a very, very different, uh, if you will, uh, driving challenge for, for all our citizens and especially is also a very interesting uh, challenge for even for our bus drivers. So we're working through that, uh, creating a public campaign so we can educate folks and move through this process. But the important piece, as the mayor said, is making sure that we have the federal government signing on the dotted line that they will make these monies available. We know that the money at least at this point, has been included in the budget bills that are before Congress. But as we all know, <laughs> uh, Washington is very unpredictable these days. And making sure that that money is obviously put into the budget and that it's approved and signed, that will then trigger us uh, being uh, reimbursed for the dollars that have been spent on the art project. So with that. Questions. Is there yeah. any questions? Can we back up to the 911 Hold on one second. Sorry, Nancy. Mm -hmm. We are going to you got the first question, but I want to make sure that we go one question at a time. So if you have multiple, just give us a chance and we'll get back to it. So go ahead. The 911 transmitter system, you said that that's a priority. But how much money are we talking about there and why is that necessary? So it, what it is, it's a 800 megahertz system that is, allows the police department to communicate with the dispatchers and connects all our public safety agencies together. The system that's in place right now, we are just been informed that it needs to be replaced. And so that is, as the mayor said earlier, uh, at least an estimate right now at $10 million. Uh, it's basically an upgrade to the system and replacement of old equipment so that we can continue to communicate within the departments, within the public safety agencies. So the last system he bought when he was first CAO <laughs> that now we're replacing. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> the system is that old. 
And it's, it's, <laughs> it's changing technology and ensuring that uh, we have state-of-the-art communications within our, within our programs. Now, this is a, uh, a phased process. It's not going to happen overnight because it is a major uh, retooling of our communication system, but it is one that absolutely needs to happen to ensure that we're uh, communicating with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office, with APD, and with all the dispatchers, et cetera, including fire for both the county and the city. So it's, it's an, a, a large investment in public safety. At least that's the estimates today. Mm -hmm. We might be able to, we're looking at maybe some bonding options to maybe make that not all one chunk, but we're working on it. How much money are we still waiting on for art, and what if we don't get the money? Well, the appropriations, as we've been uh, oh. now informed, are a $50 million appropriation in, the 20, uh, in this current year's budget that is now doing through a continuing resolution, and then another $25 million in the next year's budget. So it's all a total of $75 million of federal dollars coming to the project. So the way this works is the city of Albuquerque in the previous administration pays the money up front for the construction and then we get a reimbursement for the dollars that have been paid. So in essence, the, it's been paid for. We are now looking to get reimbursed for those dollars that were, that were uh, put forth by the city uh, to build the project. It'll be about $75 million of federal dollars for the project. Now, the good news is that we have gotten additional federal dollars for specific upgrades that were made to the project, like, for example, the intersection of Lomas and, uh, and Central. That was federal dollars that we got through the federal transportation program to upgrade that intersection so that it would be a much more functional intersection. So those dollars just came in about three and a half to four million dollars on some of those smaller initiatives. But the big chunk of the program and the big uh, uh, piece of the art project is that 75 million that the Federal Transit Administration now would reimburse the city for its expenditures. The previous administration came in with the six million dollar structural deficit. You're coming in with a ten million dollar structural deficit. Um, is this is this just how transitions happen at the mayor's office? So, um, you know, I, I think as I mentioned, actually, even in the with with the APD situation, especially after two terms of any administration, you know, there's always going to be some things like this that happen. But Monday, uh, we're gonna we will show you the connection between spending and GRT. And so this issue is uh, both a spending issue, but it's also a revenue issue. So our revenues have been more or less flat. And we actually have graphs on all of that. And so I think on Monday, we'll be able to like in detail answer your question, but it's a mix. It's some legacy from the administration, but it's also a bit of a shortfall on the revenue side. Can we talk about the police officer shortage? Um, Let me just go in order, Nancy, I'm sorry. Um, can you go to the, speak to the exact <coughs> dollar amount? I know you had mentioned yesterday there the ART project went quite a bit over what it was budgeted at. Can you speak to those exact numbers? I don't have the complete exact numbers. The entire project, as I've been informed by our staff as we've been going through the process, was about $134 million was the entire cost. But that includes a lot of infrastructure improvements that were done that needed to get done but because art, ART was in the process of being constructed, the city took advantage of the opportunity to, to improve uh, this is the water systems. mains and the fiber optics. Right, water mains, fiber optics, the, 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 the intersection I just described at Lomas and Central, several other improvements, sidewalk improvements, some lighting, some of those things were done that added additional cost to the project. But the actual construction of the project, we're going through the discussions now, it's somewhere around $120 million is, is what we're getting as it relates to the cost of the entire project. So again, the city had obviously put some dollars in to match the federal dollars because there is a match requirement with the Federal Transit Administration. But the, again, the number that, that we have been informed about as we reviewed this budget is about $75 million of Federal Transit Administration dollars are available to the city for reimbursement for, for the project. Does anybody else who hasn't been able to ask a question yet ask a question? Where do you ask a question? I do have a question. Um, in terms of art again, um, Mayor, you mentioned that, that there's still a gap, I believe, in, during your speech yesterday. Is that right? Even if the $75 million comes in, is there a funding gap or will that take care of it? Do you want to go first? Okay. Well, I think what the Mayor uh, was referring to is that that $75 million is the money that the city was counting on being reimbursed to the city. Right because of what Mayor described earlier, when you hold vacancy savings and you're using operating dollars to fund a capital project, 
under the assumption that you're going to get reimbursed, that money now comes back to the city that the city can then use to fund day-to-day -day -day operations in City Hall mm -hmm. that need to be funded. So it's as the mayor described, when you, when you do this over and over in a budget process, right. you end up cutting positions in critical areas or maybe uh, curtailing services in other areas. To get back to where we want to be and where we should be in terms of providing services to the citizens, this money is now important to bridge that gap, and sure. I believe that's the gap we're talking about is so getting back to. So assuming $75 million from, from the feds come through the project will have been funded? Yes, it yeah. would have been funded. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, based go, on the budget. Can we go back to the officer shortage? Um, just to make sure I'm clear on this, you have hundred or 847. You're budgeted for 1,000. Overtime is eaten into that. And you wanted to hire more. You, you campaigned on that. How mm -hmm. are you going to pay for the additional officers to recruit them? Yeah, so this is uh, why that explanation of the overtime issue is uh, so important. Because it, the, um, the financial reality is both things are true, meaning we have funded more officers, but we also don't have enough money for officers because we're using that money for overtime. So it actually is sort of a working capital problem, and uh, but we're going to come up with some ways to bridge that. So we need six months worth of funding so that we can continue the overtime while we hire the additional officers. So on day 12, uh, we don't have the detailed plan on how to do that, but we are working on it. And this is something that our new uh, chiefs of police are committed to and well aware of. And so at some point uh, in the budget process, which as you know, works from basically starting Monday all the way through to April, you'll get all the numbers and detail plan on how we're gonna work that out. That yeah. 1.7%, how do we, how do we get that up? I mean, obviously it is what it is, but uh, going forward, we're gonna, need, we're gonna need more money to fund this government. So a huge piece is job creation. Uh, there's no doubt about that. We've also, there's a swath of ranges of things that we can do with respect to fees and all sorts of different revenue ideas. And I think this is the good news about new leadership. We will look at every option and we'll understand what the trade-offs are for all of those. And I'm sure by April we'll, uh, and council will have to agree on something uh, to plug that gap.